Good afternoon from uh, from the Deck World uh, event and the Deck Forum um, for this fifth webinar in the series that we have been running over the year about Deck 10 R Plus. Um, we have many registrations online, uh, but special today is that we have a hybrid uh, session. So we are doing this from the Deck World event uh, in, in Munich. We have about 50 people in the room here as well. So today uh, is the fifth webinar, as, as mentioned, and today we cover uh, general uh, availability. Um, speakers today, apart from myself, are uh, Lauri Pikivi from Nordic Semiconductor and Jari Hemmelainen from Wirepass. I hope I got my finish right here. Today we'll talk about how to get started uh, or general availability. So just to recap, uh, DEC 10 R Plus, the world's first non-cellular 5G standard, fulfilling the IMT 2020 requirements. I'll say a little bit more about that later on. The standard is um, developed by and owned by Etsy and uh, in the TS103636 uh, series, uh, which is ready and available. Uh, and the essential technical requirements are captured in the Harmonized standard, uh, which is also available, that's the EN3014062. The applications for dec 10 um, smart metering and, and grids that we've talked about, smart cities, industrial IoT, smart homes and buildings, and professional audio. Having said that, the technology is uh, actually application agnostic and can be, and I believe will be used in the future also for many other applications, and that's certainly our target. Back to IMT uh, 2020 and, and 5G. So the IMT 2020 framework is defined by the uh, ITU, uh, radio communication sector. The ITU sets these frameworks to steer the wireless developments around the globe. Um, every 10 years is a new update. So the IMT 2000 was for the third generation uh, of wireless. Uh, then the next step was the IMT 2010, which was actually called IMT Advanced for 4G. And now the IMT 2020 is, is 5G. And uh, we see this triangle with three corners um, that basically set the requirements for 5G and they have to fulfill a certain standard in, in, in mobile broadband and, and capability, uh, massive machine type communication, so the density, uh, and ultra reliable and low latency communications. And dec 10 Plus fulfills uh, the requirements for two of these corners, so for the massive machine type communication and the reliable and low latency communications, and is therefore approved officially by the ITU as a 5G technology, which has been a major milestone for the technology. Then, um, the main features and benefits of Deck 10 R Plus, it a, a, can be a license, but also a license-free uh, technology. Um, it is initially available in the dedicated DEC frequency band, but can also operate in other frequency bands uh, below 6 gigahertz. Uh, it is self-healing and robust uh, mesh uh, capable, uh, covers a long range and offers a high density, the uh, massive machine type communication and the low latency uh, that were requirements from the IMT 2020. And it's also very reliable and, and robust. And with that summary, I hand over to the next speaker and that's Lowry Pikivi. Lowry. So good afternoon, my name is Laura Pikivi. I work for the Nordic Semiconductors, and I'm here to talk about the availability of the hardware to start developing on DECT NR+. So yesterday it was said that hardware is, is kind of the enabler of enablers. So the happy news is that the hardware is available. So we have um, two system in packages that we are introducing to the market. Samples are available and the mass market or like general availability is end of this year. Uh, the bigger one there on, on the screen is the 9161, which includes application core, the modem core, front end, power management and, and 
secure element and all the things you need for uh, like a working radio system to make it very easy to start developing uh, radio devices. The pre-certified there means that we are doing like a pre-certification uh, against the harmonized standard in EU to make sure that this can pass the certification. It's not a module certification yet so that uh, the customers could just use it and avoid certification. So you still need to do the certification, but we know that it passes the certification. So we have actually two products which are very similar uh, on the software side. So software compatible, no difference in, in programming these devices. The 61 includes more of this uh, peripheral stuff for a system in package than the 31. So the 31 is slightly smaller. And there on the lower uh, corner is, is the difference between these systems. So in the 31, we took away the power management and the crystals from, from the SIP. And that makes it possible to make more cost-optimized points for the power management especially. As we see that in, in DECT NR Plus, when you get started, uh, many of the applications will be mains powered. So you can choose uh, a different main uh, power management than, than what we have in the 61. The 61 is really uh, advanced and complex for battery operated operation, and it's not always needed. And then to actually start the development, there is the availability of the development kit. So that's made for the 61, but like I said, you can use it to develop for the 31 as well. Uh, they are software compatible. So on this dev kit, you have uh, some extensibility with, uh, with the Arduino headers to add sensors and stuff to get you started. And you can flash and debug your application on the dev kit. Then a uh, few words about the, the software. So the hardware is going to mass production end of this year and, and will be available. Uh, on the software side, Nordic has developed like the physical layer of the radio stack. So the RF communication, transmit and receive basically. And uh, that will be available uh, in February 24. And uh, since it is only the lowest layer of that software stack, there are then two possible ways to make your product. So you can make your own Mac implementation and rest of the stack on top of our FI with the, with the API and SDK that we support. Or there is the other option, which is our partner Wirepass, who have like a long history of, of mesh networking and mesh standards and have ported that on top of this deck NR Plus with, uh, with our chips. And on that note, I let the Gary to take the stand. Thank you. Nice to see so many people here and also even more online. My, my name is Jari Hämäläinen, coming from YBAS and uh, heading the product management at the YBAS site. I'm going to talk about the availability and how to get started with the MESS system. And is, uh, as we discussed yesterday in this forum, the MESS system is actually meaning autonomous as well as then uh, self-healing related functionalities. Here we cover first um, the focus of YEPAS uh, where we are actually doing our applications at the moment and in, in the short term future. We have a focus in the smart metering, smart tracking, smart manufacturing, and smart buildings. There are about 200 companies in our ecosystem doing different kinds of products, as you can see here, a couple of examples. And when we go to the end user, they have capability to manage those products and the mesh network formed by the product with our UI, as well as then the backend system, as well as with their own UI. If you think about DECT 
new radio, the benefits of that one. We see actually this as a standard amazing performance in unseen cost point. No SIM cards required and also you can operate in the well-established deck bands as well as then in the other bands uh, coming even more in the future. We believe that the reliability is the key focus for our customers so 99.9 .9 type of uh, SLA for the customer, end users and operations. Scalability, thousands of different products nodes in a small area or thousands of nodes per gateway as well as then the range which is actually extended by each of the nodes you are introducing to the network. Superior coverage is also very important because uh, with this kind of technology you can go to machine rooms or even to sellers of the skyscrapers or any other difficult uh, areas in the buildings, for example. So with these ones, we believe the, the DEC standard solution globally is a great, great way forward. If you take an example here, how could end customer and also product companies utilize uh, the MES technology. Here we have an example case about uh, the utilities uh, electricity business and uh, product company for the smart metering. So first of all, the end customer in this case, the utility selects the product company, smart metering company to deliver the services. Smart metering company is then selecting the chipset which is actually having the pre-integrated uh, 5G mesh network uh, provided by Vipass. And with all of that one, the smart uh, metering product company can implement their own applications, uh, finalize the integrations with different systems and ultimately deliver that to the operations in the utilities business. But this example covers all kind of end customers and all, also the product companies. So, so all having the similar type of way to go forward to build the final solution. How can you get access uh, and go, go to the DEC NR Plus? First of all, if you are industrial end customer, you have a way actually to look for the right partners. As I mentioned, we have uh, those 200 companies at the moment in our Vipass uh, ecosystem. So basically, you can select any of those in order to go forward with selected end user applications. Or then finding yet another company to do so. But if you are a product or solution provider company, you actually can choose the zip set, uh, license uh, the MES product from Vipass and uh, get prepared really to implement the final product uh, to fulfill the har harmonized standard and also all the other product related certifications. This is the must do route uh, when you go to the market with all the approvals. But if you are a high-tech wireless technology provider, then I, I propose that you definitely should be joining the standardization work in Etsy and uh, hopefully also for the DECT forum and other, other kind of companies uh, doing the same way. Let's talk about the overall system about our software product for the MESS. First of all, as I mentioned earlier, we are the company who is uh, developing, releasing the product, which is the MESH mess system. So in this case, 5G MESH uh, for the DECT NR+. 
we build it on top of the available hardware at the moment on the top, top of the Nordic chips, uh, what Lauri were actually presenting recently. And on top of that one, the product company can deliver any application they wish for the use cases. This is actually one node in, in the MESH system, but uh, there are plenty of those in the massive MESH system. So they are communicating autonomously through the MESH system, connecting to the internet with, with the gateway. And uh, through that one, to our YBAS backend and also to the customer backend. So this is, this is the end-to-end -end system. And uh, we have a role here to provide and license the MESH software on the products as well as then the backend system with the relevant UI and also interfaces towards the customer backend integrations. But if you want to get hands on right now, that's possible. We have actually one technology covering three different products. So development environment, which has been utilized already today and earlier in the sub gigahertz radio frequencies, as well as then 2.4 gigahertz Bluetooth BLE. So we have actually operational networks in this area, so you can start developing immediately. And uh, to start with, you should actually read the documentation of our mess uh, available from the developer portal. You also should be downloading the latest software development git, uh, kit from the GitHub and start developing with the existing hardware so with, with our mesh network. As soon as you are ready, then you can move on top of the Nordic NRF9161 chipset to go further with, with the 5G mesh decked NR+. And this is... Uh, uh, a slide which is very busy, so I leave it actually for you as well as for the online readers to study further when you, when you go home and as a homework. But key messages from, from this one, this is addressing how do we actually utilize the DEC NR standard in our first product on, on the 5G mess. First of all, we are focusing on the massive machine type uh, triangle of the 5G. So we are not implementing, for example, the ultra reliable low latency professional audio applications. So clear focus on, on the IoT related topics. On top of the Nordic Semiconductor 91 family and uh, in the 1.9 gigahertz band, actually the band 1, 1.88 all the way up to 1.9 gigahertz. And when utilizing in that environment the plus 19 dBm power and hybrid ARQ retransmissions, we have been reaching over five kilometers of the line of sight. Actually, we heard in the previous webinar that Nordic has been reaching over six kilometers of line of sight range for, for the measurements. In the urban areas, uh, in the cities, that is, uh, of course, uh, different. So it, it is, uh, for example, 650 meters, what was measured in the urban areas, uh, by Nordic as presented in the previous webinar. When it comes to the, the profiles, we, we utilize uh, the already existing but under the development profile in the Etsy. And uh, we are actually calling it the long range profile which we are implementing for the applications. 
there is multi-year, as we have been hearing earlier, optimization and development done for the MESH system, overall optimizing all the perspectives of, of the network. And uh, if you think about the MAC layer, for example, from the standard uh, transmission support uh, functionalities for the physical channels, uh, also the MAC layer, next hop type of selection algorithms, spectrum management like channel selections and uh, changing the channels and uh, optimizing based on the root cost uh, algorithms. All of that one has been demanding quite a lot of work which has been also utilized in the specification writing but in the implementation on top of that one. When we go for the data link control layer, the functionalities supporting the routing, next hop routing uh, nodes in the uplink and downlink, as well as then the quality of service uh, two classes, and uh, also the retransmissions in case of the failures in the HARC uh, hybrid ARQ on the physical layer. On top of all of this one, the convergence layer, the application layer packages, uh, which are usually quite long, uh, are segmented and reassembled uh, all the way to 1,500, up to 1,500 bytes of, of the packages or protocol units which are including the IPv6 header. And also one of the very key functionalities, the over-the-air protocol functionality, that is very important in order to update the firmware of, of the physical and um, software side um, in all of the products continuously to keep the products up to date. So plenty of work has been done and uh, now going next step, uh, how do we actually utilize that one in the real products? First of all, by the end of this year, we have the beta release available for the first lead customers, but uh, already first uh, quarter of next year, we will be having the general availability of our 1.05 GMS product. That is uh, focusing on the long range profile and uh, focusing on our customer applications in the area of uh, smart metering, emergent lighting, street lighting. So those are the main powered applications where we are focusing first. And uh, from the regional perspective, pretty much the focus is on the European area and also selected countries where the regulation is expected to go forward. So Australia, New Zealand, uh, South Africa and India are the areas where we accept uh, things moving forward quickly enough to, to get kind of real actions happening. So this is more or less the availability message and uh, we believe that this is the non-cellular 5G connectivity network for enterprise IoT, so that's, that's where we are focusing. Good, but then we can move actually to the wrap up. So if I will catch up the same message here, so general availability that is happening first quarter of, of next year for the specified uh, application areas with the long range profile, mains uh, powered equipment. And uh, as Lauri was already mentioning from the Nordic Semiconductor perspective, NRF uh, 9161 and uh, 9131 are the products uh, and uh, production starting end of uh, 
this year and samples available, development kit available. So this is more or less the summary of the availability of both of the sites, the chipsets and the MESH system. Thank you.